Next, I wanna talk a little bit more about another one of the elements of ggplot, the geome. And in particular, I, in particular, I wanna talk about this type called a statistical geome. So far, we've talked a lot about geomes that kind of map directly, where there's one thing, one geometric object that gives on the plot for each one of the observations that you had in your original data set. So for each row, there's a point, for example, if we're using geom point. There are some other geoms as well that do things a little bit differently. They will actually kind of process or summarize the data in some way before they create that plot. So these are called statistical geomes, and there are a number of them that we'll use. Conceptually, they can be just a little bit harder to wrap your head around because they are doing that extra processing step as part of the plotting. But once you get the hang of them, I think they're pretty straightforward. And again, they're just a really powerful way to add to what you're showing uh, with your ggplot. So some of the most common that you might come across are a geome histogram. We'll look at that a lot in these slides. That shows a distribution for one variable. So in one dimension. If you want to show distribution across two variables, you can do that with a hex geom or with a density geom. You can also create bar charts with geom call, which stands for column, and geom bar. You can create box plots and related plots with geom box plot and geom dot plot. If you want to do something uh, really fancy, there's an extra package called ggb swarm that we'll look at later that does these kind of b swarm plots along those same lines. You can also do things like add a smoothed line or a fitted regression line using GM Smooth. Again, just to highlight this, this key distinguishing point of these statistical geomes, they all take the original data set and are performing some kind of calculation or summary or other statistical operation to figure out how to plot the final geome. And so this will be a case where we don't have a one-to-one -one correlation between observations and things that show up on the final plot. Let's start by talking a little bit about histograms. And I want to make sure that the idea of what it's doing is really clear and that step of kind of like a processing or summarizing. So this shows the distribution across a single variable. And what it does, you can imagine listing that variable by values. So these might be PM 2.5 concentrations, for example, in that example data set that we've been using. So this is listing low values here, and then we're moving up to high values. And to create the histogram, you make even divisions along the range of those. And then you count up the number in each of those kind of like even areas. And that becomes the height that you show in the final plot. So we call each of these even areas bins. And then the height of each of those bins in the histogram shows how many of the observations were in that level. So for example, here we have a lot of our data, we have three points, and so this bar of the histogram, this bin, ends up being three units high. Whereas in this bin, we only have one, and to the left of that, we have zero. So we don't have a bar at all here, and then here we have one that's just height one. To create this, we use geom histogram. So we can look at that in R. We're using the same data set that we've been using in many of the videos for this chapter. So make sure that you have that loaded um, if you'd like to follow along with the code. And at this stage, I'll just run this. You do wanna make sure you have all the columns that I'm showing here. We'll be using several of these in the examples in this video. So that includes sample time, which has been converted into date, uh, date time class. Value, this is showing the PM 2.5 concentrations. This QC for kind of like whether the equipment was working when that measurement was taken or not. AQI for the category based on the PM value. And then these two logical columns, the beyond index and heating, where beyond index is indicating if this value was over 500 and heating is based on the time of the year, if it was before March 15th or after March 15th. So if we take that and we want to add a his, create a histogram, we'll start again with our ggplot call and specifying that the data is this Beijing PM data. Then I want to move that in to add on a histogram. So we can do geo histogram. And in this case, the only aesthetic, I'll only map one of those columns to the aesthetic. Again, this is going to show the distribution of just a single column in our data frame at one time. So the aesthetic there is X, and we're gonna set that equal. Let's show this value. So these will show PM 2.5 values. 
So when I run that, you can see over here, it has created a histogram for me. And you can see already that most of these values are coming in kind of below this 100 micrograms per cubic meter. But there are a few cases that are out at very high levels. The other thing that we can do with this, we can do a lot of the things we were just looking at with aesthetics and adding titles and things like that. So we can add on, uh, we can change the color of this in the fill with some constant values. So we could say that the color is, I don't know, let's make the color uh, gray and then the fill blue. So if we run that, we put those again outside of this AES call. So we're setting them to constant values and you can see that's changed some of the colors here. And then we can do things like for the labs, we can say that the X is equal to, um, let's do PM 2.5 concentration. And then Y is the number of observations that are in each of those, kind of each level of PM 2.5 concentration. So we run that and you can see it's added those elements to the plot. And then we could add a title too. Um, and we could do PM concentration in Beijing, China, uh, 2017. Oh, I forgot the GG part there. There we go. All right, the next thing to notice with these histograms, you may have noticed that we're getting a message out. Now, this isn't an error. It, it's more of kind of like a warning or a message to let us know about a choice that ours made so that we can make sure that we're okay with that. It says that it's using bins equals 30. So this is a special argument we can use for this particular type of GM. And you can find all of those by looking at the help file for the GM that you're using. You can see here that we have the standard things, like we have mapping and data, but then we've also got some other things like bins and bin width. And as you go down into the arguments, you can see what each of those mean. So bins means the number of bins that we're picking, and bin width is the width of each of those. So you can set either one of those. Let's say that we wanted to do 100 bins instead of the 30. So we can set that up here, and when we run it, oops, I forgot my equal sign. When we run it, you can see that these are much narrower. So we can see a little bit more of the shape now, and in particular, see how rare it is to have one that's right at zero. So I've got a few slides here that go through some of the ideas I just covered in our studio if you wanted to, to take notes or have some record of doing that. Next, let's, let's look at another one of these statistical GMs. In this case, we'll look at a bar chart. This can be really helpful if you have a factor variable as one of the columns in your data frame, and you want to show how many observations fall within each level uh, of that particular factor. So let's take a look. Let's go back and revisit what that Beijing data frame looks like. If you'll recall, we have this AQI column we added. And this is a factor, and it gives different things um, in terms of the, the level on that air quality index, where we might have hazardous, or we might have unhealthy, or we might have good or moderate. We might want to see how many of our observations fall into each of those categories. So we can create a plot with that. In this case, I'm showing an example of piping directly into ggplot with the data we want to use. And now for this, we'll do a geom bar. The aesthetic that we map here will only map one again. Again, this is just showing a summary in one dimension. But we want to say which factor category we want to show that for. So in this case, that's AQI. So if we run that, we can see that we have this bar chart. We can zoom in to take a closer look. And you can see that we have almost 2,500 observations that were in the good category. And then we have about a thousand that were moderate, and then it keeps on decreasing as we get up to these higher categories. As a note, if you look at this in the smaller version, you can see that some of these labels overlap. 
we're not going to focus this week much on making our graphs pretty. We'll spend a lot of time later in the class fixing things like this and making sure that our graphs are really clear if we're sharing them with other people. But again, the focus right now is just for you to get ideas of the basics of how this works. And then it, it's so um, expansive and kind of extendable that we'll be able to do loads of stuff to clean all of those pieces up as we go along later in the class. So the next thing to note about this, we put it in as, as an aesthetic, that X value. But we can also put in the fill for this particular geom. If we want to show how these are divided across another thing that's either a category or kind of like a yes, no through a logical. So we have this value of heating. And that, if you'll remember, is saying whether the sample time was before March 15th. Um, when there is heating running and there are different sources of air pollution in the city versus after that date. So if we run this, now you'll see that these bars have been split. We can still see how many observations fell into the good category, but now we can also see that more than half of these were outside of the heating period. Whereas if we look at some of these higher categories, a lot of those observations were inside the heating period. Period. So that might be something that's useful or helpful for us in terms of interpreting our data. Just like the histogram geom had these other options specific to the way it kind of summarized and showed the data with bins and bin width, geom bar does as well. And uh, one of the ones that it has here is the position. So the default when you're doing multiple fills is that it will stack them on top like this. So it's showing the two all in one. And that way you can look at the top and see the total number in this good category. But it can be a little bit hard sometimes if what you really care about is the count for each of the separate two. So we could change that to a dodge for the position. And now when I run it, you can see that it's taken each of those two pairs, kind of the inside the heating season and outside the heating season. Um, and put them beside each other instead. So again, I've got a few slides here going through the points I just made in our studio. So feel free to use those as a reference later or make notes on them about what we just covered. The last thing I want to show is a box plot. Uh, so this is another way to kind of summarize the distribution of your data. You can use those with geom box plot. If you're just showing one dimension, You'll set x equal to 1, and then you can set the y dimension to what you want to show. So let's take a look at doing that. Again, we'll set up ggplot, and then in this case, we're doing a geom box plot. So I'll do the mapping, and then inside the aesthetics function, we'll set, in this case, that x just equals 1, and then y equals the value. So we'll typically want to use this with numeric uh, columns and numeric types of data. So if we plot that, you can see we have this box plot. Again, we're seeing that strong pattern where a lot of our data is down at the lower values, but we do have some extending up into the higher values. Box plots, if you're not familiar with them, you may want to look them up. There's some rules for how they're put together, but basically this middle line showing the medium, median of the value, uh, the box width, kind of either end of it, those are showing the 25th and 75th percentiles for the data. And then the full line will show the range of data, and in some cases, things that are really far from the center will be shown as separate dots for the outliers. So right now we're showing this just with one dimension and you can do things like add different labels just like you can with any of the other uh, ggplot objects that you create. The other thing that you can do is you can use two dimensions for this box plot. So you can show how it ranges across some other value. In this case, we're setting the X aesthetic to be something other than one. So setting it in this case to be that AQI category. And then you will also want to group by AQI when, when you do that. So set the group aesthetic to equal AQI. So once you do that, you can do your GM box plot. And then again, you can do any labeling that you like to do.